Welcome to today's 3D print update on the Ender 3 and how I corrected the issues on the early model of the Ender 3. Stay tuned. Um, I have fixed all the problems with my Ender 3 and the fixes are so good that I now consider this to be the very best printer you can buy for your dollar. Um, it's not the best printer in the world, but when you compare features, build volume, price, and print quality, nothing touches this. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Even the Ender 2 doesn't touch this. The Ender 2 has slightly better print quality, and I mean slightly, but you lose a tremendous amount of build volume. You also end up with multiple pieces. You have the breakout box for the power supply, and um, same price. I mean, if the under three were a hundred bucks, under two were hundred bucks, I'd say get that. <laughs> but I think there's a ten dollar price difference between the two printers. Um, the advantages of this machine: it's an AIO. That means all in one. That means the whole machine is one piece. The power supply, LCD screen, spool holder are all attached to the machine. So there's no breakout boxes. There's no brain box that's connected with cable. There's no spool holder sitting on the table. Everything is built into the machine. We, in computers, we call that AIO, all-in-one. Um, it also has a very large print volume for its size. It's a 220 by 220 by 250 print volume, which is unusual for a print of this size. Prepare for the clones. There's going to be a lot of them. <laughs> um, if you need bigger than that, your next bet is the CR10 Mini with its 200 by 300 by 300. Um, but that's 100 bucks more. Just as good a quality. In fact, the framing is probably slightly better on the CR10 Mini, but it's a hundred dollars more. This gets you ninety-nine percent of that for a hundred bucks less, and it's all in one. No breakout box. The CR10 Mini is going to have that breakout box like the CR10 does. And as you can see, besides the fan and the power supply, this thing is damn near silent with all the modifications I made to it. So you've already. I'll have a link down below for my mods video, but I'll be doing a live stream next Wednesday where we take one of my other stock Ender 3s and add all the modifications to it. Um, Alright, there were some issues with the Ender 3. From what I understand, these issues are now corrected. Um, people who are receiving printers now, today, are not having these issues. If you bought one of the original 500,000 printers, you may have these issues. So, I'm going to tell you how to fix these issues. Once you fix them, you'll get this kind of print quality. This is atomic filaments, luminous blue or semi-silk blue. Ridiculous. I mean, the quality is out of this world. Here's a little one. That is Maker Geek's Black as Night. Rocket, same color. See, the print quality is incredible. So, the problem we were having with this printer, this is my first model. I can't move it because I'm printing. So I don't want to get one of the stock ones over here. The problem was this right-hand trolley here was binding. Um, once I find it, I'm gonna add the trolley back to this one now that I know how to fix it. The problem, let me move this mic. I think I keep hitting it with my hand and it's probably pretty loud for you guys. Stay. Um, all right. The problem was the frame was being bent. If if you go to install this top brace up here, and you have to move anything at all to make those bolts go in, stop. I'll tell you how to fix it. First, the cover for the brain box here. This is where the electronics are on the printer where you put the SD card. There's two screws on the front, and if you slide the bed forward, there's a screw on the back. Sometimes, from the factory, this um, plate is too far left, and it's actually on top of the left extrusion, so it's actually underneath this left vertical when you bolt it on. Well, that's basically a shim, and that's going to cause this vertical to kick out to the left. The, ease, the fix is super easy. Just loosen these two screws and that back screw one turn each and you'll be able to push this panel to the right a little bit and that will clear this left vertical so it will bolt all the way down to the extrusion on the bottom here so that's important make sure you're not pinching 
this top plate because that will cause this vertical to lean outward to the left. Okay. Next thing, when you put the two verticals on, measure them. Take your tape. I have a little measuring tape I use. You should be exactly 25 centimeters from side to side on the inside. So measure it down here, measure it up here. Make sure it's 25 centimeters on the dot or make sure it's exactly the same top and bottom. On mine is 25 centimeters precisely. Um, if it's not, find out what's bent. Something is not screwed in all the way. One of the bolts for these primary is not screwed in the way or your base here is a little twisted. Okay, if you loosen the two screws on the left here, the two screws on the right, the primaries that go through at an angle, you'll be able to push down and level your frame and then tighten them up. And then mine, like two of them were perfect, and one of them rocked when I put it on the table. Loosen the bolts, press down, it'll straighten out the frame, tighten it up. Okay, um, now to assemble this to make sure it's straight, to confirm it's straight, because if there's any pressure between these two sides, it's going to affect your print quality. First things first, bolt this arm onto your vertical trolley here, your Z and X axis trolley. Do not use the washers, just throw the washers away. Um, you can tighten them pretty good. Use your finger, feel along here. This should be level. And this is where the plate for the trolley meets the extrusion. It should be level with your finger, you should feel it. It might be higher or lower, but it'll be the same all the way across. Okay, so get that the same, bolt it on. No Z-Rod, leave your Z-Rod off. Take the trolley, install it on the verticals. Remember, you have not put this on yet. Okay? It's just going to sit here. Come over here and look. The distance from the extrusion here to here should be the same as the distance from the extrusion here to here. On mine, this was kicked out. This was kicked out 13 millimeters more than this side. Or no, I'm sorry, 3 millimeters more. This was like 12 and a half, and that was like 15 and a half. Um... If everything appears straight, then what you're going to need to do is this. Loosen the two primaries holding this in from the bottom. Grab this and twist it until this comes into this. The same exact distance as this side. Once you get it the same distance, tighten up those primaries while holding that twist. Good. Stop. Now measure again. Make sure this is the same on both sides. That will cause a very um, nasty dragging problem as the x-axis moves back and forth. It's bending it, and you don't want that. Um, and it's, it's not really going to bend your x-axis, but what it is going to do is it's going to cause the pressure from these wheels in these slots and on this side to increase. And that increased pressure, that increased drag, there's only two bolts holding this in. If, if this produces enough drag, this entire arm will pivot up and down. As the printer goes up and down and that means when it goes up it's going to angle down when it comes down it's going to angle up because there's too much drag over here if you're having trouble with your bed leveling if you get it level the first time and then the next time you have to change it again the next time you have to change it again that's probably what it is you have too much drag over here now once you fix that we're going to install the right hand trolley you're not going to attach it to the x arm you're going to put the trolley on by itself okay if you have to fight to put that trolley on it's too tight Loosen the wheel, loosen the extension on the trolley, put it on, loosen it until it wiggles on the, on the vertical here. So put it on the right hand vertical until it wiggles. Then tighten it, check it, tighten it, check it. You want to just barely tighten it so that the wiggle stops. No more. All right? And then you should be able to slide it right off and slide it right on. Now, once you do that, you're going to a little bit of force, force your X arm out a little bit. Okay? and slide the trolley down behind the X-arm. Look at it, and the screws should line up. The holes should be perfect, okay? If it is, and this is resting against the trolley, you're good. You can tighten it with this together. So put those two bolts in there, tighten that up. Um, once you have that done, before you put the top brace on, grab your, your X-arm right in the middle. Grab your, your, your hot block here, hold it in the middle from underneath, because it's unplugged right now, yours and slide it up and down it should slide up and down very very easily if it provides any resistance then you have an alignment issue take your tape out measure it 25 25 okay make sure do not tighten this wheel you do not want that tight you want this to be neutral so it just floats up and down when you have that nice baby smooth up and down put your top brace on with just the two left bolts halfway in 
Now lift it up, drop these two bolts in, they should go right into the holes. If they don't go into the holes, then you have one of the rare one of these printers that has a badly cut um, top brace. Now this is assuming you've confirmed your 25 and 25 at the top and bottom. Your distance here is 25 centimeters. Okay, if it's not, that's your problem. What was that? A little message popped up and I'm not sure what it said. <laughs> um, make sure that it's the same distance. Okay. If these holes don't line up, then you're going to need to get yourself a Dremel, a drill or something. I have a side cutting bit it's designed to plunge and cut around, but a drill bit will work too as long as you're careful. Please wear your eyes, you know, and you know, goggles, not just glasses, because if a metal shaving gets underneath there, it's going to give you a very bad day. <laughs> um, go in there and you want to widen the hole in the top brace until you're able to put that screw in without having to squeeze these together to get the screw to go in. Once you have those slots widened, put your screws in, build your printer, finish building it, you're done. And you will get absolutely stunning print quality. That molted pattern you see is not defects, that's actually the polygons in the low resolution protonome. The protonome is designed to be printed this size, so when you scale it up it doesn't go as pretty. But you can see, the print quality is phenomenal. I went from getting this. You see all the extrusion issues along there, where the, the lines on the face that are not lining up properly. I went from getting that to getting this. Look how silky smooth that is. That's the kind of print quality you can expect from this printer. incredible absolutely incredible that's it um, links down below of course I have my profiles online I also have a new G code for you to install I call it the bed leveling Marvin it's basically a Marvin with the 75% bed width two-thirds bed width um, skirt for your to help you level your bed you don't want to level your bed with a square squares don't work or at least you won't know it's not working until the end and you go and you realize it's loose <laughs> so always use a circle for bed leveling never a square and um, you can download that. You can download my profile. I have links for where you can get the printer. It's currently on sale at GearBest for $189. I have three of them. I paid for all three. I am probably going to buy a fourth so I can do a further update video to show you guys that they fixed everything. For example, the new model also has ABS for the um, power supply cover. But someone got the file for the power supply cover. They asked for it because theirs came broken. And that's on Thingiverse now. It's in my... Ender 3 collection, which I'll also link below. So if you want to color match your power supply, you can do that too. So I've, I'm printing out all the parts for this printer in blue, just as uh, in this blue. All my mods and upgrades, you know, the cover for the LCD and stuff like that. There is one other issue this printer has. Uh, two, actually. I still don't know what that message is. Um, the bed uses four wheels, and that's a no-no because they're set up in a triangle with one extra. So the way to properly tighten this bed is to take this front right fourth wheel and loosen it completely. You know, turn it so that it, you can spin the wheel without it moving the bed. Okay? Then you tighten up the three wheel configuration just right. Do not over tighten. If you over tighten, you're going to wear out your wheels, you're going to destroy the bearings, and you're going to provide resistance, which is going to add noise to your print. So do not over tighten the wheel. You want to tighten it just enough that the bed doesn't wiggle. Okay? Now, once you do that, then very gently tighten up the fourth wheel just until it touches and it doesn't free spin on its own. Stop. If you over tighten the fourth wheel, it's going to act as a pivot arm and it's going to push against the triangle. You don't want that. So loosen the fourth wheel, get it properly tightened with the three, then tighten the fourth wheel until it just touches. I tried doing it without the fourth wheel, it doesn't work. There's too much play. It's, it's too big an area and the triangle's too small. So you do need the fourth wheel, but just barely tighten it. Another problem that I have with this printer, you can actually see it happening right now. I'm going to risk tipping this up so you guys can see this. I don't know how happy this printer's going to be about this. Um, can you see this? Right here. So the extrusion back here. Can I tilt further? Yeah. We're daredevils, huh? So the extrusion back here, the K 
cables for your X-arm and your hot end can fall behind this extrusion. And as the printer goes up, it can snag on the back of this extrusion and yank the plug right out of the extruder. <laughs> so you want to make sure to grab these cables and pull them over here on top of the extrusion so that they do not snag on the back of the extrusion as it lifts up. I can show you up here actually. So imagine if this is the back of the extrusion, what would happen is the wire would fall behind the extrusion like this and it would snag as the wire got pulled up. And when it snagged, it yanks it right out of the extruder motor. Um, I'm going to design, maybe I'll do it tonight if I have time, a little 3D printed shoehorn. Just a little a little shoehorn to attach to the back of the extrusion so if the wire falls behind there, it just slides up instead of snagging on the 90 degree. Um, but it caught me off guard a few times. I'd be like, what the hell's going on? It's still going, but it's air printing. And I'd restart it, and I'd push filament in and be fine for a second and nothing, and then I realized the extruder wasn't turning. It was unplugged. So that's something to check out. Otherwise, this thing is mind-blowing. The four bed level nut problem is still there on the new one. Um, you do still need to be careful with your framing to make sure it's straight. Anytime you build a printer, you need to make sure it's straight. The um, power cover is now ABS instead of 3D printed. And from what I understand, um, the alignment issue with these parts and the holes drilled in this top brace is now fixed. So unless you get one from the old batch, which shouldn't exist anymore, all three of mine came from the old batch. And even in Mayan, this one, I did not have to drill. Those, well, actually, this one I did. The one and two, I had to drill. Number three, I didn't have to drill. And I ordered them all at the same time. So at some point during the manufacturing process, they realized they screwed up this top brace and they corrected that. Okay, So check your plate. Check your alignment. Check your x axis Make sure it's free and slides up and down smoothly without the Z-Rod in place. And then when you go to put your measure, your inside distance, make sure it's the same top and bottom. And when you go to put your top brace on, you should not have to move these verticals to put those bolts in. If you do, check your alignment. If your alignment is good and you still have to move these verticals to put the bolts in, stop. Get your Dremel. Widen those two holes on the right-hand side. Don't widen them all the way around because the bolts will go through. Just widen them left and right. Um, you know, look at what direction you have to widen them. I think um, I, had to, oh, I had to widen them outward because the holes were too far in. Um... But you shouldn't have that if you order one now. But if you got one of these early ones, that's your fix. If your printer's been giving you conniption fits with quality, there's your fix. Go through this and make all those corrections, and you will be good. Check out my mods and upgrades video. The biggest upgrade I love is adding my SD card slot to it. It's so much easier. Um, the PCB cover is also nice because it keeps you from touching things behind there. I don't think you're going to hurt anything, but it's nice to have a cover. Um, beyond that, that's it. Uh, check out the stream on next Wednesday where we will go through the process of adding all these upgrades to this printer, uh, one of the other ones, and we will go from there. I can show you another print. I just finished a, another Sir Snake in that blue. Oh, yeah. The print quality is just incredible. All the links work. I love this printer. I love this printer so much. The it's just I'm going to work on designing components to convert all of my printers to the same AIO construction. Power supply, brain board, and LCD all on the printer like this one does it because that's so much better. I hate the breakout box. <laughs> the breakout box is a pain in the butt. I can fit three of these on that table. It's amazing. It, it's very very nice. You, I mean, look how much I could fit on that table over there. It's, it's just so compact, and yet it's got an expanded i3 plus build volume with the 220, 220, 250. So you can really do a lot with it. You know, big stuff, wide stuff, tablet stand. I made hold my tablet when I'm doing the live streams. It's, this printer is what we call a disruptor. <laughs> it's going to trash the market. I mean, every other printer manufacturer has been called out. Uh, it they're going to have to scramble. I mean, they they already are. Um, TiVo has the Flash coming out, which is going to be their version of this. Um, they have to because <laughs> the quality and and value is so good 
that all these i3 printer makers are just going to die if they don't come out with something similar at a similar price. I mean, who's going to pay 350 bucks for a one-hell duplicator i3 V2 when you can get this with a bigger print volume and better print quality and no mods necessary for 160 bucks less? No one. <laughs> Even when that goes on sale for 250 it's a bad deal compared to this. I mean, I love my duplicators. I have two of them. But this is... It's a game changer. It's like the CR-10. They're changing the game with this. And they are already iteratively updating it. They're already making fixes. Um, source code will be released um, this month or next month. They'll have the source code released for it. It's it's slick. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to have a printer. I mean, look up. I got this thing cranking away. You know, 200%. I'm probably running 50, 60 millimeters a second with this. And here, how quiet it is. That's the um, the the Astrosign um, dampers. Oh, they're copies. I don't think they're the originals. And this, so the stepper motors are totally silent. You don't even hear them. It's just uh, they're just totally silent once you put the dampers on there. So that's it. You guys have a great day. I'm rambling again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I now fully, fully endorse this printer as an absolutely fantastic all-around printer. It is, bar none, the best your money can buy for a first printer or even an additional printer because the print quality is stupendous. It, it's, it's truly stunning, the print quality that you can get out of this. And, uh, and this was printed hot. This was printed at 225 Celsius because atomic filaments like to print hot. And no stringing, nothing. It's just, it's, it's beautiful. I print little, you know, that's a metal copper filament. Uh, this is a reprocessed PLA, so it's recycled PLA. This is from Angus Devison's Video Maker's Muse when he showed off the Nautilus um, gears. He didn't make this, but he showed it off. That's where I got the idea. I saw him do it, and I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> also did it in that. It's just nice. I mean, it's they did a good job. They did a very, very good job, and I am pleased. So I look forward to more. You guys have a great day.